Hi students, uh, so to welcome today to our first kind of lab module, uh, and we're going to be working on kind of learning about the basics on in how to code in Mathematica. So Mathematica is a really, really fun, um, kind of interesting analytical tool. Now, I know that you've taken Engineering 19 and you probably have been exposed to some MATLAB coding. Um, that's going to really help you, I think, with Mathematica. Mathematica is a little bit more, I think, simpler in terms, Math MATLAB is a little bit more like C plus coding. Um, Mathematic is more kind of like a visual coding uh, tool. We'll kind of see that in just a second. It's, it's still a little bit more complex than I think LabVIEW is an extremely visual coding uh, kind of tool uh, and interface. This one's going to be a little bit uh, more complex. But the reason why that I utilize Mathematica uh, is just a couple of reasons. So one, I think it's if you're new to coding or if your MATLAB's rusty, it's really easy to kind of pick up and utilize. Uh, Mathematica is also kind of, uh, if you want to do kind of uh, basically, if, you, uh, if you're looking for numerical calculations, MATLAB uh, is definitely uh, nicer to use. But if you're looking at symbolic uh, calculations, so like taking derivatives, et cetera, et cetera, I think it's much more easy to use uh, Mathematica. Also, again, in my personal opinion, Mathematica is uh, more visually appealing as well in terms of the, gla the graphs that we're going to produce in this course. Um, so uh, most importantly, a lot of the <laughs> most of our problem sets uh, solutions and other documents are going to be done in Mathematica. So that's why it's uh, very useful for you to learn it here for this course specifically. Uh, and you could take it off, uh, or you could take it you know, with you wherever you go after that. So let's go ahead and get started uh, into some of the basics. So um, just kind of your, I've opened up my, mathemat my Mathematica notebook. So this is kind of your notebook uh, interface here. You could kind of customize uh, and look at kind of the format, the styles here, uh, screen environment, style sheet, so you could have it like a report, standard report, um, then you, when you have it here, it has different kind of text. Um, so, but I just want to kind of go with, you know, kind of standard notebook that you'll utilize. So just click a file, new, notebook, open, and we'll get started in here. Um, one of the nice things also about Mathematica is I think it has a very useful and helpful help menu. So if you're trying to look at a function, so let's say I'm trying to accumulate more like total, what does total do? Total gives you basically the total, it's the sum uh, of the list. Accumulate adds basically each item. And it has the, these nice applications. If I want to figure out how do I plot something, I just type in plot. And then you can kind of see it shows you the syntax. You can kind of look at these, um, look at these functions here. It kind of shows you what syntax you need, what range, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, applications, fun options. Uh, so there's lots of ways you can kind of look into this notebook and kind of see how you can do these really unique and uh, nice looking plots. Plot style, uh, but again, we're going to go through a lot of this uh, basic stuff as yourself. But the help menu is nice to kind of get examples and ideas of like how do you want, you know, if you want to do something, it's probably already done in Mathematica. So I would really look into this help menu um, first. Or if you want to like look at the lists, list manipulations, uh, there's lots of different options that are available um, for you to do. So. That's kind of one thing that you want to look into uh, when you look at, like, if you don't have to derivative. derivative. Yep, you see there's already a function to find here, D. And we'll get into that. Shows you the syntax again, some nice examples. You can kind of click on it here. And again, it shows you, actually tells you like how, what a derivative is. You can learn a lot on Mathematica. So that's kind of your help menu. So remember, you just go up here, click on the help menu, and type, and you'll be ready to go. So, uh, with that, I think now we're ready to, oh yeah, one last thing. Um, again, if you want to get really, really fancy, you could look at these right here. And if I look at the confirmational analysis right there, you can see here in Nbutane, you could look at this, uh, you could look at this uh, notebook right here and we could kind of figure out and see, okay, this is the confirmational analysis of ethane, butane, and two butanol. So we can look at this, play around with this notebook. There's lots of different uh, kind of topics that you could uh, look at. So physics, science, mathematics, uh, and they're all these kind of dynamic notebooks. And again, you can actually uh, create these yourself and publish them, and then you'll be actually fine and good to go uh, in terms of how to learn and use utilize Mathematica moving forward. Uh, so you can publish these, and it's a nice kind of, uh, you can see, uh, it is the author, permanent citation. So. Really nice way to kind of boost your resume for grad school. So with that, let's go ahead and move forward. So I just want to figure out, uh, show you just some, a uh, couple kind of quick tools and some useful uh, kind of guidelines for moving forward. So 
uh, if I want to type text in Mathematica, I have to press or type Alt and then combine that with one. Oops. Sorry for that there. Alt plus one, that's going to allow me to type like my header. So my header, Mathematica. Yay. <laughs> if I want to type some smaller text, you can kind of look and combine Alt 5. Well, so if I type Alt plus five, that's going to allow me to do text like this. If I want to do Alt 2, text, or Alt plus 2. You don't need to type Alt plus 2, but just Alt and 2. If you click that at the same time, then that will allow you to do this. But this is all text. So this is not going to be evaluated in terms of your um, kind of your numeric calculations. So you don't have to do this. One really useful tool we're going to see, uh, utilize this tool a lot. Uh, let me make a header. So let's get into our module text section one, for example. You could create subsections. So if you do alt plus alt and four, you could create these little um, kind of subsection headers here. These are really useful because if I want to do a calculation, which we'll see here, or let's say I want to type in more text, so more text to come, I could then, if I want to make my notebook a little bit clean, I could click over here on the right side and hide this. Or I could even hide the whole thing. So you could kind of, again, make really, really nice notebooks and sections that kind of open up into like section one, section one, or subsection one. Just a nice way, and you get really, really fancy uh, in Mathematica subsection two. And you can kind of close each of these. Even more text. You can play around and make really, really nice, well-organized notebooks, especially when you're analyzing lots of data sets. It's very useful. You know, this could be, you know, subsection one, but it could also be you know, temperature, set one. You can really organize uh, your data analysis well for research. So that's something nice uh, and for you to take uh, kind of with you further on. So, but uh, I'm going to hide that and let's actually get into uh, the first kind of module, which is Let's type it out. Uh, let's call this variables, uh, commenting, and mathematical operations. Commenting. And mathematic actually also gives you a spell check option now, too. One quick thing that um, commenting and numerical operations. One thing Mathematica does not have is an auto save feature. So be sure to kind of save and save often. So I'm going to save this as demo one. So, my subheader, so let's look at commenting. Commenting code. Commenting your code is really, really important. I do a horrible job at commenting my code. Um, two plus two, so let's see. If I want to comment my code, um, this, but uh, good. So if I want to um, comment my code, if I do this parentheses and then this star and then close it, when you see this text is kind of like cyan or bluish color, or, you know, this kind of greenish color, that's commented code. So it will not evaluate. So when we say evaluate, two plus two is a mathematical operation, right? We know the answer is four, but for Mathematica to spit it out, we need to evaluate this line of code. So this line of code here. So one way, a lot of ways that I, you know, there's lots of ways to evaluate a line of code. So one way is just kind of clicking at the end here and pressing shift enter. So see, your input is this two plus two, your input, the first input, first line of code input was IN1, output is four. So now I need to go back here. Um, so that's one way to kind of evaluate your line of code. That's the output. Uh, I could go up here and just say evaluate the entire notebook, or I could highlight a cell and just evaluate part of the notebook. So I can evaluate the whole notebook, and it'll just give me that. See, the output became two here. If I just want to evaluate this line or this kind of subsection of my notebook, evaluate cells, and it's going to run it again, evaluation three. So again, it depends on what you're doing and kind of the application that you're working with. So that is fantastic. So we've commented our code. Now let's uh, figure out how we could assign variables. So you see how a, little a, and x here, it has a distinct color, right? So like the numbers was, uh, was black. Also, if I type in capital D, you see how D is black? The reason is, and if I try to shift enter, or if I try to assign D equals five, you see I get this error, symbol D is protected. 
When you see a symbol or you type a symbol and it's automatically black, let's look up here and type it in here. It's already a predefined function in Mathematica. So whenever you're trying to type a variable or you know assign a variable and you see it's already defined or black, that means it's either already assigned in your notebook and you need to check what that output is, or it's already a protected symbol. So we cannot use capital D, unfortunately, in Mathematica. But X is, little x is blue, we can assign that a value. So let's assign x equals five. And now you see if I type x now, it's black. So if I shift enter, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this semicolon is just to suppress the output. I could also just, if I get rid of this semicolon, it just shows five. But I like to kind of suppress outputs when I'm assigning variables because I know I could see what the variable is. So I don't need to know what that is. But, so if I see x here, I'm good to go. I could also assign a equals 10 as well, or b equals 76. Just assigning variables. Yep, no issues there. And now I can perform mathematical operations. So x times a, 50, x squared, here we go. How about a dot b, or a times b times x? Yep, no problem. So we could do all these types of mathematical operations. And again, I'm just shift entering to make sure that uh, those values are there. Um, you could kind of do a lot. You could do kind of, let's do the square root of b times a. You could do the exponential of a. Lots of different you know, uh, values. So we can play around uh, and basically do any mathematical operation that you, you know, dream of. Let's do a to the No problems. <laughs> That's poor. How about B? Yeah, very, very, very long answer. Um, so those are just kind of some of the mathematical operations that you could deal with. Um, one quick uh, thing as we're as when we're talking about uh, variables here, uh, one of the ways that we could kind of play around uh, with this uh, set of code is we can actually go back uh, and per, uh, we could temporarily assign a variable value. So let's say I want to get rid of my de definition of A. If I type clear A, see how A becomes blue now? So if A becomes blue, now A is no longer defined here. Let's say I was doing some, you know, operation, let's say I want to do A plus 10, and I want to temporarily assign A a value of 56. So if I just kind of want to see, if I'm kind of playing around and I want to see, I have a variable, I have a function of an equation, I just want to kind of test like what value uh, and how, what's going to, how the output is going to change, I could do the slash dot and then temporarily assign one variable a value. So let's look at this in the context of an actual function. So if I have a function, let's call my function is equal to, um, I'm going to clear, uh, one of the ways I, I want to just clear all variables is you could just quit kernel and all your variables become undefined again. So if I look at uh, x, for example, up there, I type in x now, shift enter, it's going to think about it, still blue, good. So let's look at a function I have uh, log of x times x to the fifth plus square root of x, nasty equation, plus y squared plus exponential of z. Big, big, big function here. Um, I could still, again, I could do, let's see, function slash dot, what, I, what if x is 1, what if uh, little y, what if little y is 10, and what if z is 15? So I can set all those values. What's going to be the output of my function? Yep, this, if I want to look at it numerically, I can do that backslash n, capital N, and that'll give me my value. I can also do, what's the derivative of my function of, with regards to x? So that'll give me that derivative. I could also take the derivative to the third power. So the third derivative with respect to x. Not third power, but it's the derivative, the third derivative uh, of the function with respect to x. I could also do integration. So I can integrate my function from x from minus 10 to 10, from y to minus 10 to 10, and then z from minus 10 to 10 as well. So integrate my function, it's going to take a little while here, but I could actually get a numerical answer. Again, I could backslash n, actually get the actual number. 
that's what you're interested in. Complex number, yeah, obviously because of that uh, log. So um, you can also solve uh, kind of equations here, or sets of equations. So let's say I have two equations. Equation one, which equals x squared plus i to the third. And then I have equation two, which equals two times x plus three y. This is going to be very helpful in this course once we get to um, mechanics. So equation one, equation two, I want to solve when the conditions are equation one. I'm going to set that equal to one. And equation two, I'm going to set that equal. You see the double, um, the double equal sign says this equation is going to equal this value. So that's the double equal sign. You have to use that when you're using the, the solve function. Again, we'll do more on that later. But again, these are just some examples. So you can see the conditions where this set of equations, this series of equations, is satisfied. So it gives you kind of the output and the values there. So very, very important uh, to kind of know that, or kind of know that that's available in Mathematica. So a nice function to have in your back pocket uh, in order to solve expressions. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're working with here. So that's kind of solving equations, clearing variables, working with variables, uh, and commenting your code. Again, I, you know, I've been I've been talking through this. If you look at the attached notebook, uh, and I could provide people with that. It gives you a little bit more commented code, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the basic idea here. So let's go ahead and we're going to call that one uh, section. Next time we are going to go ahead and work with uh, basically working with this and table functions. So more on that next time. I will see you in just a bit. <laughs> Have fun and again, continue to play around and experiment with Matt. Thanks. Yeah.